hopefully this is a long ways away. I think, I hope, I pray. So do you all know what the major danger of this year is going to be in coming into next year and why farming and the food supplies are key points to this and what is going to take place? I need you all to really pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. Make sure that you comprehend exactly what I am saying. Okay, folks. So we're sitting here and we're looking at the market and what is really happening. So when you're looking at food, and that's 15% of all global calories come from wheat and rice. 15% folks, that's one third of all of our wheat comes from Russia and Ukraine. We're supposed to be planting crops all around the world right now. For wheat not happening in much of Russia, not happening anywhere in Ukraine, you need to understand the food supply and how it works. The whole supply chain is broken because it's just in time. It arrives just in time to be put into whatever it is that they're making, whether it's cars or, or computers or whatever it may be. When you have a disruption, it just screws everything up and unclogging it, well, I don't even know if we'll ever get that close or that's gonna take us years before we can really get, I think, the supply chain moving again to what it was prior to 2020. Stuff is broken and nothing's happening. The supply chain for food, pay attention folks, the supply chain for food, days, we have 90 days worth of food in the supply chain from the grocery store, to the garden and everything in between. If for some reason that that stops, and if we stopped all the farming, for whatever reason, we would have 90 days left of food worldwide. So think about it this way. 25% of all global production is food. We're about to lose 12% of production. That means we're losing half of our food supply of wheat this is going to hit places like Africa first and it's going to hit places of poverty unlike anything that we've ever seen they estimate 800 million people currently on earth live below 1200 calories per day now to give you a illustration of what I'm talking about the Germans would not allow the Jews to have more than 600 calories a day. So they are only double that amount of calories that the Jews got during the Holocaust. So if they're at 1200 calories today and they're in the places that are poor, which are the most likely those calories will be either cut off or greatly reduced. Now the bigger problem is the fertilizer, energy, and energy prices run the tractors to run the trucks to run the trains and the ships and everything else. And the price of phosphorus and potassium potash and nitrogen, those are three major things we use to make fertilizer, natural gas. 90% of ammonia is made from natural gas. Prices in natural gas have doubled in some places, going up four times its amount. It's gone from $200 a ton to $1,000 a ton. Phosphorus, 10% of all phosphorus comes from Russia. 25% of all the potash comes from Russia also. It's now been banned in Russia. They cannot sell it. We cannot buy it. They said, oh, you're going to cut us off on all these sanctions and everything else. Well, guess what? We're going to cut you off from all the potassium. Potassium is up $700. Phosphate went up from $250 to $700. This is causing so much stress on farmers that the farmers are now all around the world, all around the world, folks, are not planting their fields. They are reducing the acreage because without fertilizer, you're not going to grow as much because you're going to take a 40 to 50 percent hit right off the top without having fertilizer that means your yield at the end of the year is going to be 40 to 50 percent less so why plant all those fields if it's not going to be a good year they're thinking as the best fertilizer goes up 
they'll pull more and more acreages and they won't plant so for the price of corn has doubled soybeans wheat skyrocketing we better have a perfect weather all over the world this year just saying because if things continue the way they are and don't turn around quick we can't get fertilizer hundreds of millions of people will experience famine by the end of the year it's just a fact we need to do everything we can to support our farmers we need to understand what is coming you need to have a garden and plant some seeds if you live by a farm go help them out start storing food now folks the governments around the world are already buying up large orders of food right now commodity prices going up not just because of the, the traders it's because governments are trading and buying and they're like now oh, first in first out countries like africa they're going to have a really really hard time because they're not going to going to get food that they desperately need either we're all going to take a real hit on this this is going to be something that's going to affect everybody folks especially if we don't have a good weather this year and in order for that to take place if anything's like the past history it hasn't been a good thing if we know we don't have fertilizer we should as a nation be doing everything that we can right now to help the farmers everything that we can right now to get the fertilizer you know everybody's worried about the price of inflation on for the average person okay yep that's really bad and we're all taking a hit on that we're paying more for gas we're paying more for food we're paying more for everything and we're all hurting if we don't take care of the farmer right now and get them fertilizer and make sure that they can afford to run the things that they have to make sure that they can afford to operate their fields and equipment at full capacity the inflation is the least of our problems folks it will be the shortages next year now there are governments that are buying up all kinds of food like i just said all right they're buying up anything and everything from all over the world what I'm trying to tell you is, it's time for you to prepare for your family. And then, others that will be hungry also. We have to help each other out through this. There are going to be people who just can't make it, folks. I mean, they're not going to be able to afford to do anything. And they'll have to bring another skill and it's gonna to have to be almost like a barter system, would be my best guess. But we're just gonna to have to help each other out. If you can grow food, planting the spring, anything that you can do to ease the burden on your family is gonna help you out in the long run. This is why it is so important to keep prepping because eventually you're gonna hit a breaking point of what you can afford to pay for a product in a store. You'll have some food storage if you've been prepping. Be careful on what you think your breaking point is because real, real trouble is coming and we have to be prepared and we have to be prepared to help others. Right now I think the paintings of the times when I have felt when I first started my channel, the beginning, all the way back with all of you, that all of you now, as our channel is growing, is going to play a role in saving this nation. And I think this is the beginning of it. It's preparing for those in need. And it's gonna be really, really hard because a lot of people are gonna be like, well, I did my part, I listened, I watched the videos, I prepared, and they did not. And I know, but we're in this together. You gotta take care of your family first and foremost, always. But we're also in this together. That doesn't mean you should be telling the world what you are doing because governments will come in 
and they'll start to make it illegal to hoard food or what they consider hoarding food. Don't be telling a lot of people what you have. I know channels, a lot of YouTube channels, we all show you products, we all show you everything, we show you how to do things and everything else and we're taking the risk for you so that you can be prepared but don't be spreading it around. The governments, they'll start demonizing people, if you want to use that word. First, they're going to use them as, you know, hoarders and stuff like that. Hopefully, this is a long ways away. I think, I hope, I pray. But that's what will happen. So just be quiet and nobody needs to know your business. Just urge your family members or close friends to begin to just store some food for their family. Create a network of people who think like you, like we have here in this channel, and really understand what's coming and just help each other out. I think the food shortages, like what is supposed to be coming down the pike, is gonna be something like we've never seen before. And unfortunately, I think places like India and Africa, I think they're gonna get hit the hardest and I wouldn't be surprised if there's hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, I don't know, could die because of the lack of food. Just the lack of food. If we continue down this path we're on, that will leave us with just half the world. You got to keep prepping. You got to really do what you can do. I've done a lot of videos on how to help you get going, how to top off, how to help you start. There's a lot of great people in this community. You need to get it done. Your time is running short. I want everybody to be safe. I want people to thrive. I want people to be able to survive whatever is coming down the pike in the months and years to come. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. And until next time, folks, I'll catch you all on the flip side.